Okay, so without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Ryan. Okay, first I want to say two things. One is, I know I saw that grading review sheet you guys all have. <laughs> oh no, I don't think it was the best part of the presentation was. Please put down Ryan's presentation. <laughs> So I'm going to pull around with it now because my mom said I could. <laughs> okay. Put it on the table. On the table? Not on the pocket? Yeah. <laughs> well, trust me. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you all for asking me to come and talk to you all. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. Now before I start, let me say I have a 45-minute presentation planned for all of you. But at the rate I speak, only five minutes. <laughs> okay, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am 17 years old and I was diagnosed with ADHD in first grade, Asperger's syndrome in the fourth grade, and I have a learning disability. I am currently a senior in this high school and I'm on the high honor roll and in honors math and science. I also take engineering courses offered at our high school. Now, I participate in many after-school activities such as chess club, science Olympiad, and the Envirothon. Um, besides school activities, I'm in the Lockheed Martin Explorer Post and Boy Scouts. I am an Eagle Scout, and for my Eagle project, I have produced a video for Enable about Asperger's Syndrome. Although I made the video for Enable, it was a way I could help other people diagnose with Asperger's and help them. Now, I, I enjoy many other activities as well. I like the water ski, downhill, snowboard, go camping. My main interests are, and this will not surprise you, Legos and computers. <laughs> now, after high school, I plan to go to college, either mechanical or electrical engineering. Now, Asperger's syndrome is a neurological disorder that falls within the autism spectrum. Now, there are many things that are part of the diagnostic criteria, but these seem to be the most recognized. Social skill problems, verbal and nonverbal language problems, intense interests in a particular subject, sensory difficulties, routines and repetitive motions, and there may be more than one disability involved. Now, when I was young, I knew I was difficult and different. Um, I didn't have any friends, and I really wanted one. I was teased a lot, but I didn't know why. Then one day, when I was about 10 years old, my parents told me I had a disability called Asperger's Syndrome. There wasn't much information about Asperger's Syndrome at the time, so my mom had to travel a lot to like, Toronto to get information about it. She spent lots of time looking up information for Asperger's. We didn't know what anyone else who had Asperger's, and no one even heard of it. So even the schools didn't have information about it or knew how to work with children to diagnose that first. Pretty much we were on our own. Now, so, but as my parents learned about Asperger's, they taught me and my brother about it and explained to me that it was because of Asperger's that some things were going to be more difficult for me. At first, I did not like heavy Asperger's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believed it was because of Asperger's that I didn't have any friends. Eventually, I realized it was not because of the Asperger's that I didn't have any friends, but because of the Asperger's it was hard to make friends. Now, I learned th some things that come naturally to people with children, but these things would be difficult for me to learn. The important thing was to have me able to learn these things as well. Now eventually, I realized there are many good qualities in heavy efforts. I'm very smart, I'm very good at doing certain things, computers, math, and science are all easy. I love the ability to construct things. My parents have never, ever heard me say that I'm bored, except I'm on the car ride. <laughs> now, today I'm very proud of who I am, and I wouldn't be who I am today without efforts. 
Just like any other typical person, people who are diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome are very different from each other. We have different personalities and different degrees of severity. As I said before, besides Asperger's, I have also have ADHD and have a learning disability. Both of these greatly impact my abilities, my behavior, and my development. Even though we're different from each other, there are still many characteristics that are common amongst people diagnosed with Asperger's. Now, remember, these are some of the characteristics of Asperger's who are not considered diagnostic criteria. Anyone who has a child or works with a child diagnosed with Asperger's will, perfect, will all agree that these characteristics will perfectly describe that child. Go ahead, ready? First one is stubborn and argumentative. <laughs> we had difficulty in smiling to the camera. Here's an example. <laughs> I'm not joking, it's how I smile for a camera. I'm extremely disorganized. I detest handwriting, why is it all tight? Um, we avoid gym classes. We, we refuse to use a locker. Um, we have extreme lack of fashion sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I'm not catching this one. Okay, we dislike repetition. We detest homework. We're very blunt and to the point. And we have an odd sense of humor usually. And most likely we have an interest in Pokemon at one point in our life. <laughs> now, probably are many more, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I've been very successful so far, but I did do it all of myself. It could be three, I mean three things that are very important in my development. Willingness on my part, determination on your part, and a good support system. Without all three, it would have been much more difficult to be successful. Now, after I learned about Asperger's, I realized I had a lot of frustration from the parents. <laughs> that I was going to have to work very hard to learn things that came naturally from other people. It wasn't going to be easy. One thing we did was set goals. You need a direction and a focus for the future. You need to work for something. Mine was to be successful. I wanted to become an engineer. <laughs> or work for this. Both are great goals for me. Um, I also agreed to work on many things like making eye contact and learning not to take some phrases literally. Now my parents say, drop it. I know they mean the subject, and I can play that for me. They actually have to perform. I also agreed to do homework. At the first, the amount of homework was reduced to the goal that someday I do all the homework myself, without a scratch, or constantly reminding my mother to get started. I know that I want to go to college, and that I must be able to do these things on my own. I also agreed not to do things that I started. Sometimes I want to quit something after I started, but my parents had a goal. But it made a commitment, I had to stick to it. For example, my first year of Boy Scouts was very hard. It was hard to socialize and do teamwork. I wanted to be at home playing my Legos, but I committed to Boy Scouts for that year, so I had to finish it. If my parents had let me quit, I would not be a Boy Scout today, let alone Eagle Scouts. Also, I would not be uh, at this podium talking to you. Now, there are many things that you can do to help, too. Do things in small steps and be creative. For example, how to break things down into small steps was when I was learning how to enter a conversation. <coughs> Usually, when I, typically, when I enter the room, I would interrupt everything that's going on. And that's another characteristic, by the way. <laughs> Our first homework assignment we were to walk up to a group of people and listen in and then walk away without interrupting. <laughs> my mom did not know this because I tried it at home. <coughs> she thought I was sick and took my temperature. Really. <laughs> now, please don't give up on us. We can be very stubborn and we, don't, and we want to do things our way. People think I was being rude and obnoxious and stuff, <laughs> but I really didn't mean to be. I just didn't understand what people were saying. Sometimes the explanation of what 
what happened and what I should have done helped me to understand. Getting mad at me or punish me wouldn't teach me what I did was wrong. You may have to go back to the drawing board. I have learned that going back to the drawing board meant you were going to try a different approach. I was always looking for the tough part. Anyway, if you were trying something one way and didn't work, try it another way. And accept this for who we are and try to understand this. If you can see things from our perspective, it will make it easier for you to understand what we are going through. And you will need lots of patience. <laughs> Getting mad will only make things worse. Besides, we have to learn patience ourselves. You can set an example. <laughs> and the most important thing that will help you is da -da -da, have humor. <laughs> yes, humor. If you don't have a sense of humor or high blood pressure, you may want to choose another job career. <laughs> Unfortunately, parents don't buy that choice. <laughs> A support system is also extremely critical for the child and for the parents. I have a great support system. It consists of families and friends, my brother Scott, Boy Scout, social skill classes, family counseling and medical care, and school. I would like to take time to explain and talk about each of these areas and explain how they help me. Now, family is very important. When I was younger, I didn't have any friends, so my family became my friends. They played games with me and they would sit on the floor and help me look through thousands and thousands of Legos for a particular piece <laughs> that I refused to explain what it looked like. <laughs> okay, but remember, each piece is different and there's thousands and they all have different colors. Now, they also listen patiently while I talk endlessly about Pokemon. My parents said they have learned more about Pokemon than they ever cared to. My dad is really agreeing with this. He seems to be his head up there. <laughs> okay, now as a family, we do many things together. We play games, or cards, or basketball, whatever our favorite is can be. My parents also make sure that I'm involved in many things. Besides scouting, I played basketball and baseball on community teams. They brought me to Pokemon leagues. They encouraged me to join after school activities. They didn't want me to come home and play computer games all day. I would have loved to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and let me warn you, I have my permit. <laughs> <laughs> you, be, you better stay off the road. <laughs> No, stay on the road. Stay in the middle. Stay for. Okay, this is my brother Scott. Cute, isn't he? <laughs> he is a great brother. He's also in Boy Scouts and he's working on his ego project as well. He has a couple of disabilities too. He has OCD, which any of you guys know is obsessive compulsive disorder, and he also has ADHD. Needless to say, he is very organized. <laughs> that can be very interesting when his organization and my very disorganization confront each other. <laughs> now, anyway, Scott has helped me do many things and watches out for me. He accepts me for who I am, even though it's not always easy for him. He also helps me to understand if I did or said something inappropriate. A lot of times, he'd be able to get other kids to understand why I do things the way I do. For example, once we were ca camping and met some other kids, pretty soon they were calling me weird, jerk, and stuff like that. But Scott um, pulled them together and said, told them how I was a computer geek, and that's why I wasn't good at some things. <laughs> For some reason, they seemed to realize I wasn't weird. Just to eat. We all <laughs> but for the rest of the week, we all played together. We had a great time. Thanks to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he also helped me with many sports. I was clumsy, still am, and I don't really want to play on some sport teams, but I did. And sometimes I played teams with him. 
it was a great discount, you let me be on the same team with him. Just, I wasn't good, and sometimes it could be embarrassing. Okay, this one time, I was a catcher for baseball. Okay, I didn't catch the ball because the pitcher threw it too hard. And I, then I asked the umpire to get the ball. He was already standing up. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I wasn't a catcher for very long. <laughs> also, once during a basketball game, my shoelaces became untied. And the game was stopped. I didn't know what was going on. It was so much noise, I, couldn't, I had no clue what, was, what anyone was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. So, my brother came out onto the field and tied before me. Not many brothers would do that. I don't know why they would either. <laughs> <laughs> now, Scott has also taught me how to be a team member, and not just in sports. We do many things as a team. Here's a picture of me and Scott in a robotic competition. Now, he's helped me to learn the rules of a game. I always wanted to make up rules for every game, which is also characteristic, by the way, and I wanted to play the game my way. <laughs> During games, I would always carry on discussions with the umpire because I didn't agree with him or I thought my way was better. <laughs> oh, by the way, it always was better, just didn't like me. <laughs> okay, now, I'm better at sports now. I don't play on school or community teams, but I do play in the neighborhood. And in gym class, I'm not the last person to pick anymore. Now, friends. It took me a while before I had any friends, but Scott helped a lot. He helped me learn how to socialize with kids in the neighborhood and with his friends. Soon his friends and my friends also. Today, I have many friends that do a lot of things. I'm very active in many things, and I found many other interests. Although, Lego remains number one. <laughs> Here's a picture of my best friend, Adam. Now, this is really weird, because this Christmas, I was like, uh, two Christmas ago, we both gave each other a present. It was a bionicle mask stand. When I say we both gave each other a present, I mean we both gave each other the exact same present. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a coincidence. Okay, now, I've been in scouting since first grade, and scouting is one of the most important things in my life. My mother knew it would be difficult for another person to have me as their den leader. So my mom became the leader for all five years as a Cub Scouts. Now I'm in Boy Scouts, my father is one of the adult leaders. He refuses to wear the brown shirt. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it would haunt you. <laughs> Anyways, both my parents are also very tragic counselors. Today they do it because they want to, and not because they have to help anymore. Now every summer, I look forward to camping as a the first year, I begged my mother to come and get me, but she said I made a commitment I had to stay. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm glad I did, because I probably would never have gone back. I've learned to overcome many fears while camping here, too. Fear of the dark, bears, the beaches. But I still like the food. <laughs> now, my Boy Scout leaders were great, though. When I first started, no one would have ever believed that I'd make an Eagle Scout. In fact, one of the leaders jokes with me that he would have bet I wouldn't do it. I, just, I think I disappointed him. <laughs> In this picture, I'm giving two, my two leaders certificates. One for courage and the other for patience. <laughs> they told me it's the only time they ever received an award during an Eagle Scout. <laughs> okay. Now today I help other kids in scouting, and after I turn 18, I plan to continue in scouting as an adult leader. Now, this will be my seventh year with social skill classes. I've learned many things, and the people who run the program are great. I think it's important that kids with Asperger's go to social skill classes. Besides learning important skills, you also meet others who are just like you. I have made good friends in these classes, and some will be good friends forever. Over the years, we have many interesting discoveries. Discussions. We've learned how to handle teasing, how to recognize anger, excess stress, and what we can do to stop it. We work on interview skills, we role play in different situations, and we talk about something in particular. If we want to talk about something in particular, we can. Guess what I always talk about? <laughs> now, family counseling and Medicare were also very important in my development. People always say 
children are not born with an owner's manual. Well, that certainly applies to children diagnosed with Asperger's. <coughs> and in our case, very few people <coughs> how to work with us. It is hard to raise a child with Asperger's. Of course, my parents had told me this because I certainly don't remember this. Uh, raising a child with Asperger's is very difficult. Besides being faced with a challenging child, parents have to learn how to accept criticism from other people. Many people blame the behavior of the child on the parent for poor parenting skills. This is quite often, and parents have to make changes in their lifestyle and careers to properly raise a child. Now, families are faced with many challenges. When my brother and I were young, we went to family counseling. It not only helped my brother and I with our self-esteem, but it helped our parents deal with the challenges that they were faced with. Counseling is very important, and all families should get some help at some point. It certainly can't hurt. I am also under medical care for my ADHD. At one point, I was taking medicine to help me with my Asperger's, but not anymore. Medicine may not be prevalent, though. And it's should be, the, the choice should be taken into consideration. I know that it's helped me immensely. Now, I was diagnosed with ADHD in first grade, and after it in the fourth, as I said earlier. I have a high IQ, but there's a 20 point difference uh, between the performance and verbal portions, which is identified as learning disability. Besides Asperger's diagnosis, which was so new in the United States when I was diagnosed, there was very little information about the strategies. My mom, on my mom's second trip to Toronto, she went to a presentation by Tony Atwood and bought this book. She said the book was the best thing she ever bought. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Lego she bought was so much better. <laughs> okay. Now, once I got in the middle school, sixth grade, things became much more difficult for me, and I was not performing at my potential. Asperger's, ADHD, and my learning disability severely impaired my, disability, my abilities to learn. The professionals were very good. They learned everything they could about Asperger's, and did everything they possibly could to make sure that I would receive an appropriate education. Today, I have several modifications on my IEP, including a full-time one-to-one -one. teaching assistant. <laughs> <laughs> because of the persistence, knowledge, and creativity of many professionals, I have become successful in school. <laughs> Today, I'm the top 10% of my class. <laughs> Resource room, counseling, speech and language, and a teaching assistant. Because of my learning disability, the foreign language was required for the way. The modifications and supports that have been approved are the use of a word processor. Today, I use a broken down laptop. And the spelling and grammar text. A scribe, tape text, and photocopies of notes as well. Today, I don't need the tape text and I rarely use the scribe. But I don't receive photocopy notes either, but it's only because I have a teaching assistant to help me with that. Test modifications include tests taken in another room with minimal distractions and extended time to take tests. Also, I was approved to receive services from Vested once I entered college. Wow, sounds like a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> but all this has helped me succeed. Now, this this is my teaching assistant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just want to say one thing. Is Mr. Harris here? Where is he? Hi. Thanks for Mrs. Aher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, the modifications and services I, that helped me have helped me immensely. But it's because of the teaching assistant and that I am doing as well as I am today. A teaching ass teacher's assistant provides me with instant feedback, which is critical. It's not delayed until later in the day, or perhaps not at all. 
This instant feedback is what helps. It takes a special person, really special, to work with student diagnosis with afterwards. I know what can be difficult, stubborn, and I will argue the point to death. <laughs> Especially if it's something I want, don't want to do. Like homework, for instance. Now, our TA, Mrs. Ahern, has an excellent mix of qualities. She has a great sense of humor. She has knowledge about afterwards and knows how to work with me. She is persistent, and she has a way of explaining things to me so they make sense. Hey. <laughs> 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 he also makes me accountable and responsible. By the way, her note just told me that to be silly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No secrets here, Jack. <laughs> She makes me accountable and responsible and helps me keep and helps keep me focused and organized. Besides academics, she helps me with social skills, communication, teamwork, and organization. Mrs. Ayer is not a crush me though, but teachers but teaches me how to become independent. I can't have an assistant all my life, and I won't have one in college. So it's very important that I learn as many skills before high school is over. Or I can just hire a personal secretary. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are many things that are difficult for me, and many others just afterwards. But as time goes on, and with the help and lots of patience and practice, I am able to um, I'm able to overcome many of them. I'd like to talk about some of these right now. One of them is this organization. I am very disorganized and I refuse to use a lock in this day. Mrs. Ayer has tried, unsuccessfully, but she admits she has to pick her battles and this ain't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is my locker when it's filled with the absence. Okay. So to make things easier for me, I just carry everything I need all day long. Oh. And now he has one of those, you know, on the wheels. <laughs> so it looks like he's catching a flight every day. <laughs> and then with a backpack, it looks like he's going to be going mountain climbing after the flight. So, you know, but you got to pick your battles. The locker isn't that important. They don't know what I do after school. Don't tell them. <laughs> okay. Because of our disorganization, many people call us the absent minded professor. We have the ability to make wonderful discoveries, but can't remember if we had pencil in class. <laughs> My parents and school personnel have tried different ways of trying to get us to be better organized. We haven't found anything significant yet, although that time does help, or did help. Um, Mrs. Anger helps me with many areas of organization. She helps me with outlining, writing down homework, where to put my notes, handing in my homework, making sure that papers are put in the correct folders, things like that. It may seem very silly, but it's very difficult for me. Now, handwriting is hard, very hard for a couple of reasons. First, asking me to write something is like asking me to pop my leg. It's much easier for me to use a keyboard. Today, I still hate to write, but it's not as severe as chopping off my leg. <laughs> it's more like breaking my arm. <laughs> Second, I'm able to communicate my thoughts better with the use of a keyboard. I don't know why, it's just easier. Keep my thoughts down. Now, note taking is another one here. I do not like to take notes. Under the right circumstances, I can take notes with a keyboard, but I will not but I will not write the notes. Another reason why I don't like to take notes is as a teacher is talking or explaining something and I have to type or write those notes, I won't understand what's going on. I can't take notes and listen at the same time. It's usually best that Mrs. Ahern gets, Mrs. Ahern takes the notes and I listen. I learn much more and it's much less stressful. Another thing that's difficult for me is concentration. Um, paying attention is also very hard for me. I need to concentrate and I do that by looking down and playing with something. Usually it's origami. I'm not allowed to bring Legos to school, which is obvious. Um, I can't look at the teacher when they're talking. 
And typical kids will look at the teacher, and that's how the teacher knows that they're paying attention. If I look at the teacher, I spend so much time looking at the teacher, I can't pay attention to what's going on. So, the only way to tell if I'm paying attention is to ask Mrs. Ahern to ask me a question. Mrs. Ahern will ask me questions periodically to make sure that I'm on task. And I always surprise her with the correct answer. Sometimes before she asks. <laughs> <laughs> now, studying is very hard for me, both because of my Asperger's and because of the ADHD. I can't sit and study all, so I go to, to a resource room. The best, I study best when I'm pacing, usually out in the hall, so we don't disturb the other students. I pace in circle. Mrs. Ahern sits in the chair, neither reads or asks me questions. As I walk in circles, I don't get dizzy. Mrs. Ahern does. That's why, <laughs> that's why she has the best face the walls. So yeah, sometimes I face the wall with my <laughs> The school officer has seen us do this the whole time. He's threatening to hook me up to a windmill, so my energy <laughs> could generate a piece of <laughs> Unstructured period of time can be very unnerving. The playground is supposed to be a way of relaxing for the kids, but it can be very stressful for us. Kids don't want to play with us, and we're tired for teasing and bullying. But in elementary school, I was allowed to stay inside, where I was quiet and I could play on the computer. It was a great way to relax. And when research was over, I felt much better. People who uh, worked on the computer were not, did not feel much better because I screwed the computers up often. <laughs> <laughs> now, the lunchroom is another stressful environment. It's extremely noisy and there's too much commotion. I had to go into the restroom, you know, I think it was sixth grade. That's good. Yeah, that's it. Six years then. I had a, I have to eat my lunch in a resource room or another room. I can play or I usually read or play on the computer. And this quiet time alone is very important for me to cut myself and continue for the rest of the day. Now, some people may argue that we need to go outside and to the lunchroom so that we can learn to become more social. But you have to realize that we are socializing all day long. And it's very difficult for us. We need a break just like everybody else does. Now, homework is one of my greatest stresses. Besides forgetting to lay down the homework assignment, I would also forget to hand it in. At one point, my parents and teachers got this great idea. They would try and give me detention when I forgot to hand my homework in. After receiving detention for the upteenth time, they decided that the tactic wouldn't work. This is an example of when you go back to the drawing board and come up with something else. One thing I strongly suggest is don't punish us because they didn't hand in our homework. It won't teach us to remember. It's like pun punishing us for our disability. Uh, we don't need discipline. We need training. Mrs. Ahern really helps me with this now. It's because of her immediate and continuous reminders that, and direction that I am finally beginning to remember. Also, actually during the homework to your child too, especially when I was younger. I hate repetition and doing the same math homework day after day and showing all your useless work over and over <laughs> is very stressful. And now that I'm in 12th grade, oh, let me change that up. This is 11th grade, this. I do understand the importance of doing homework and showing my work. <laughs> but it's still very hard. Now, meltdowns. This is what me and my friends and afters refer to times that were very stressed. It was worse when I was young, but as I got older, I can recognize when I'm getting stressed. The quiet times that I have to myself during the day are help me immensely. I can talk about my special interests, I can read, I can do things that help me relax. Also, by having a TA, I am less stressed. Little things that were extremely stressful, like being ahead of my homework, writing down assignments, forgetting a book for class. Well, those are all stressful for me. I'm no longer in constant trouble as well because of her. <laughs> now, teamwork is very difficult for a couple of reasons. You cannot put a student with social communication problems into an unstructured group of kids without teaching the students how to work in groups. Now, first, I have problems communicating my ideas. 
second, often, quite often, the kids won't listen to my ideas anyways. They can get together with their friends. Third, I get teased and made fun of. Or fourth, they let me do all the work. <laughs> That's the only time we get the good grades. <laughs> <laughs> so, but teamwork is very important, not only for the school, but also in college and in a job. This is a skill we need to learn. When I first started working on teams, the teacher put me with one other student, someone the teacher picked out, so it would be a positive experience. After a while, they would, I would be put with two or more students. Now I work on many teams. It's still hard, but I improved a lot. Mrs. Zayner continues to be me with teamwork, communications, and social skills. Now, approach is very important as well. Mrs. Zayner will discuss things with me and doesn't dictate what I should do. She tries to give me what to think about my choices. Don't ask questions you don't want the answers to, trust me. <laughs> we will answer them honestly, and then we'll get in trouble. One time, after watching the film, and, or, what was it? Religion. Religion. One of those religious school like things. We were asked a question. The teacher asked this question. What did you think of the film? I raised my hand. I thought how stupid I thought it was and how I had no relevance to what we were learning. <laughs> <laughs> he lost control in class and became very upset with me. I didn't know why I was in trouble. I only answered his question honestly. Now, instead, if he asked, what, instead of asking what did you think of this film, maybe the teacher should have asked who liked the film. Then only the kids who liked the film will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's two plus two people. <laughs> <laughs> now, we are very honest and not very tactful. I'm getting better now. Before, I might say something like, I don't like your coat. Now I say, excuse me, I don't think you like what I'm about to say is. And then I'll say, I don't like your coat. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have to be honest and to the point with us, too. Don't use sarcasm, because we won't understand it. And we lack the ability to read body facial language. Although I'm beginning to understand it much better. Now, I can understand what Mrs. Ahern here is angry, but if you see her here, if you watch carefully, and she gets really upset, or you're right. Okay, <laughs> 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 well, I finally got it. <laughs> we have a special rapport with one another. <laughs> also, if you want us to do something, ask us to do it. Don't say th things like, everyone handed in their homework, because I would say, no. <laughs> Uh, you might want to ask, uh, if you want to be handed in your homework, say, hand in your homework. <laughs> Don't assume that we know what you're really asking. Another example. Ready? At the beginning of the school year, the teacher was stressing the point that we are not to be late for class. So she said, if you're not going to be, if you're going to be late, then don't bother showing up. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of that week, I went to the library. <laughs> this was in Bray, and I believe was seventh grade. Okay. <laughs> what was funny that time? I didn't get that one. <laughs> Consistency helps as well, especially at younger ages. By being consistent, it really relieves our stress. We know what to expect. That's one reason why middle school was so difficult. Every teacher did things differently. I couldn't keep it straight. Transitions can also be very difficult. I had to advance notice that something was going to be different. Fire drills were, were different, difficult because I never got advance notice. Besides, it sounds very annoying. As I got older, I learned how to handle change much better. And in dealing with us, avoid vagueness. We are leaving soon doesn't help us. We don't know what soon is. Soon can be in one second or 30 minutes. So we're going to continue to ask when are we going to leave. Be careful, though. 
when I was younger, if you said we will leave in five minutes, you have to be ready in five minutes. <laughs> or melt on my girl. <laughs> now, if it wasn't for all the help and support I received, things would be very different for me. One, I would be failing. Two, I would not be planning to go to college. Three, I would not be a Boy Scout, yet alone an Eagle Scout. Four, I would not have the friends that I have today. And five, instead of being a burden to society, I will be an asset. <laughs> But not everyone is as lucky as me. Many kids don't get diagnosis, or they get the wrong diagnosis. Then they don't get the help they need. Many kids don't have the support systems I have either. Some don't have large supportive families, friends, and neighbors. They may only have one parent at home who has to work in order to support them. This parent wouldn't have much time, yet alone the financial resources to help that child. They are probably exhausted just trying to get the daily routine being accomplished. Parents may also be at a loss at what to do. They may not be knowledgeable about Asperger's or know what services may help the child, children. My mom said there should be a course called Advocate 101 to help parents find the resources and learn about their child's disability and what they can do to help them. Now, these children families need the help and support of many of us. <laughs>